Hello everyone and welcome. Today we're tackling a fundamental mechanism for controlled linear motion, the slotted link assembly. So the assembly uh, consists of three components. There is the disc with an extruding pin here. Then we have a yoke with a slot and the base. So the disc rotates around a pin that extrudes from the base. The pin and that slot has a tangent relationship. And the yoke is constrained um, to the base here. So I opened an empty assembly file here and we'll um, model the, the disk within the assembly environment. So I go to create, name that disk, and pick my template, metric, template, and millimeters. And um, search for that top plane. The disk is fixed, I can see that, that icon here. And I'll start a plane, a sketch on the top plane. I'll draw a circle, dimension that with 88. Then another with 12. And one smaller one over here with eight. Apply a uh, align that here to the origin and give that a distance of thirty six. I continue with the standard point slot. Take here, that one, something like that. Draw two lines here, from here to the origin, up there. Make those construction geometry. No. That one. Then apply an angle. Here are uh, 66 and a radius 28 and that small radius 3. Okay, that's it for that sketch. Then I'll go to the extrude, select that profile. That one, and that one. Um, flip the the direction of that extrusion and give it a value of six. I'll continue with um, the pin. Give that an eight millimeter millimeter value, and continue with that slot here and go through all which that round cut. Okay. And I will apply a full round fillet. Take that face, that one here, that one. Then a circular pattern of this cut here around that axis make that three times and give that an appearance of slate blue. There. Then I switch the selection tool to basis and pick those two and give that uh, 
yellow appearance. That's it for the disk. I return to the assembly environment. I will define a work plane here, an offset of two millimeters, and create that yoke. So I'm going to create, name that yoke, pick my template, metric, millimeters, okay, and pick that plane here. Go into the new sketch command on that plane and first I will project some geometry that circle that circle from that pin I'll rotate the view a little so you can see better and um, I'll go to the center point slot Take that center point, pick that one as well, make that coincident there, fully constrained. Um, we can change that to construction geometry here. Then let's go to offset, pick that sketch and offset that six millimeters to the outside. And then let's take that um, two point center rectangle. So I'll pick again that origin, go up here, drop that there. Um, dimension with eight. And height of it just with a center line there and that edge one 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 okay we can clean up a little with a trim command wall extrusion just take those those okay finish that sketch go into the extrude Take that slot region, those as well, and give that uh, six millimeter or four millimeter dimension. Hide that um, plane here and give that part uh, rubber black and return again to the assembly environment where I can add that work plane. Let's have a look at our two parts here. Maybe you prefer some other type of visual style shaded with edges. And now let's model the base for our assembly. Let's define one work plane, offsetting from the bottom here with the 12 millimeters, and create our last component, the base. Again, with a millimeter standard template. And let's start a sketch on that plane. And project our circle here. And one point here that defines the length of that slot. Now let's take that and upon slot command again, place the origin here, 
over there. Then define that radius with a 28. Pull that back a little. And define by that length and that center point dimension of 44. The sketch, go into the extrude, take that region here. Uh, two. Give it that a dimension of six millimeters. Okay, that. Make that sketch visible again. And define one sketch parallel to plane through point. So let's search for that plane that uh, cuts our object here so the YZ plane and that point there okay so now let's start the new sketch on that plane here with the two-point center rectangle hold it out like this and apply some constraints here. Origin to that point and that end point here. Give that a height of 28 and a width of 16. And um, go to project geometry, look for that face here. And there it is projected to our sketch plane. Then, okay that, go into the, well finish the sketch, go into the extrude, take that face, and make it a six millimeter um, no, dimension. Okay, that. Uh, let's hide that. That's hidden. Let's hide that work plane here. And let's mirror that feature over that center plane here. So, mirror that feature over that YZ plane, huh? And just for looks, let's apply a chamfer to that. Two more meter is fine. Take that edge, that one, that one, and that one. Okay, that. And return to the, well, no, let's hide that sketch, number one. We don't need the visibility anymore. Okay, go back, and now in the assembly environment, hide that sketch. Oh, we didn't hide that one. Okay, and okay, we forgot, or I forgot to extrude that center pin where the disc will be rotating around. So I go back to the base, go to edit. Um, Start a new sketch on that plane, projecting that circle, and then finishing that sketch, extruding that circle, and defining the distance by the top face of the disk. There it is. And now we get that. All right, so now we get that disk grounded. That little pin here, right? We don't want that. So I deselect that. And instead of that, I will ground the base. And now let's make those two parts that were based on the disk independent. So 
Um, I do select the adaptive functionality for the two parts. Let's see what that does. The yoke is free to move on the disk. And now let's um, apply a, a joint. Pick that here or over there. And make that a rotational joint between that edge and that one. Good. Now let's um, constrain this yoke with uh, that face um, constrained with that face crossing that first option okay so now look so far disk rotates yoke goes back and forth and now let's combine these two parts with the tangent constraint. So I pick that cylindrical face and I pick that face here. Apply that. And now let's animate the whole thing. So we get the relationships right here. We can find the rotational um, joint. Let's edit that. No, we don't want to edit that. Let's drive that here. And make that from 0 to 3,600 degrees for 10 times revolute. And there is our finished assembly. Well, I hope you liked this video. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.